And you're very welcome back to Ireland AM. We are in glorious sunny Cork this morning and joined now by a very familiar uh, person, not only in these parts, but to everyone on our TV screens, broadcaster and editor of Bio, CorkBio.ie, Joe O'Shea. Joe, good morning to you. Good morning and you're very welcome to Cork. <laughs> it's our pleasure. We picked a fine morning to come here uh, for a chat. You are a Corkonian, a proud man. Yeah. We'll talk about all the changes that are happening in, in Cork and brilliant investment that's coming. But you literally grew up down the road from here back in back in the 80s yeah, what was it up, like then just up the river and i still live in the city center i'm back living where i was originally so i'm about a 10 minute walk from here uh, it's good to be back i was away I was in dublin left when i was 18 so i was in dublin for a long time then i went to london there more recently came back here about three or four years ago and back living in the city and it's a good time to be back here as well it's a great mm. time to be back in cork so a very different time in the 80s you said to me before we came on air the goal uh, for a lot of people was to get to 18 and get out yeah well it was listen cork has been cork had a long history of being kind of economically d depressed shall we say and in the 80s it was tough here because some of the big employers closed down it was Fords, it was Dunlops and there wasn't a great atmosphere around the city so people my age everybody you got to 18 you either went you know got a job here if you could or else you left and most of us left right okay uh, Cork is known for many things including big tech and pharma that's brought a lot of people back to the city hasn't it yeah I mean it's it's interesting Cork has kind of reinvented itself you know it, it lost its way because it was a port city and you can see where we are now it was a very busy mercantile port these days we've got tech, we've got pharma, we've got 6,000 people working in the huge Apple campus just on the north side of the city here. We've got major companies coming in. We've got Google, we've got Facebook, small enough small presence, but they're growing. We've got huge pharma companies all over the, uh, all over the harbor. Tech is the big thing here now in the city and also outside the city. Places like Clonakilty are becoming real hubs as well for that kind of stuff. So the future for Cork is a kind of a mix between yeah, definitely tourism in West Cork and increasingly in the city and in East Cork as well, but also a, a big, big focus on tech. And what is the influence of the people who've come to work in those companies brought to the city and county in terms of diversity and cultures and flavours? Well, you know, we're in the city centre here, right? So you're between the rivers, really, and between the hills. Uh, and in Cork, there was a survey done a couple of years ago, one in, one in two people living inside the, the, the city, really into, in the centre, are non-nationals. So half of the people living in Cork in the city centre are non-nationals. And if you walk around the city centre in Cork, you'll hear accents from all over the world, you'll hear languages from all over the world. You won't hear a lot of dubs. Now, why, Joe? <laughs> why is that? Why don't you hear because that Dublin accent? Dubliners don't come to Cork City for some reason. They don't come to Cork. They might go to Kinsale, they might go to West Cork if they're adventurous. But for some reason, and I lived in Dublin for 20 years, I love Dublin, and. I bring friends down here, or I talk to people in Dublin and say, you know, I'm from Cork, and they go, oh, right, I was there in 1992 for a Michael Jackson concert. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so that's 20 years. That was the last time you were in the second, like, we're only three hours by rail, for God's sake. You know? Dubliners are more likely to go to Amsterdam, to Paris, to New York, than they are to come and spend a weekend in Cork. Okay, well, maybe that could be part of a future campaign. Maybe you can spearhead that. Yes. Bring the dubs to the Rebel yeah. County. There is a huge campaign underway, launched by the government last year. Uh, worth over 400 million euro in investment into the city and surrounds. Tell us more. Well, Cork's changed, and people might have seen it. You know, last summer, Cork invented the concept of outdoor dining. Now, this had never been tried anywhere in the world before, putting tables and chairs outside a restaurant. And we hear it's after catching on in Paris and Rome and all <laughs> over the place. It's, it's incredible, Cork leading the way as well. <laughs> I but, knew you'd claim that. <laughs> yeah. But we've got 17 streets in the city centre here now have just been pedestrianised, right? We've got outdoor dining everywhere. We've got canopies, got all weather protection. We've got fantastic restaurants in Cork, all locally owned, all great local produce. That's the thing in Cork, we don't have franchises. You won't see Starbucks everywhere. You won't see the big chains everywhere. They're all local Cork businesses. And what that does is it makes a city feel vibrant, but it makes it feel personal. And it's a compact city. You can walk across Cork in 10 minutes, Cork City Centre, but you'll see 100 interesting things on the way. You'll see 10 places you want to eat. You'll see 10 places you want to drink, 10 places you want to have a coffee. So Cork is changing very, very quickly. It was changing before the pandemic, but now it's really poised to kind of, with all the investment that comes in, with all of the new developments that are coming down the docks here, with the streets being pedestrianised, bike lanes, new parks, 48 million for the public realm in the city centre just announced last week. Cork is, is set to become 
or let's say cement its status as the coolest place in Ireland. Okay, yeah, well, yes, yeah, cementing it, you're claiming it already. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be massive for the city and indeed yeah. the county. Yeah. Um, of course, Porky Cueve, uh, one of the most famous GA yeah. stadiums in the country. Uh, Cork has always attracted artists, singers, yeah. writers. Cork has had its own brilliant music scene, the yeah. Jazz Festival, Frank and Walters, etc. Yeah. Next year, you have a very big artist who has chose Cork and not Dublin to come to. Yeah. Elton John's coming to Cork and he's going to be in our beautiful, magnificent, state-of-the-art, best-in-Europe stadium here down in, uh, just down the river from where we're standing here. And it's, it's fantastic that it's been announced, Stephen, because, and tickets have gone on sale already, because it gives us something to look forward to. August is going to be good in Cork, you know, people are, restrictions are lifting, Ireland's opening up. But we're looking forward to an amazing summer next year and we'd love to see people come to Cork and visit us and see what we've got going. And Elton John will be a great weekend to come down here because this place will be absolutely rocking that well, weekend. Well, it's a measure of the Rocket Man because it's his farewell tour that he has chose yeah. Porky Cueve to play. Uh, before we finish, I did mention earlier that a very famous actor's house is up for sale yeah. for the guts of 400 million. Can you reveal to us where the house is and whose is it? Uh, it's Maureen O'Hara's and it's down in, near, near Glengariff and it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. It's one of my favourite places in West Cork and her house, she picked it because her husband at the time, a guy called Blair, was a seaplane captain and it had a little bay where he used to fly seaplanes across the Atlantic and then when he knocked off work for the day, he could bring his magnificent huge seaplane and he could land it in the bay and call, call in to Maureen O'Hara and be with his wife. It's just one of, West Cork's always had celebrities and it has now. We've got mm. Graham Norton, of course, lives down in Ahakista year round and he's doing his UK radio show from Bandon at the moment, broadcasting to, you know, 10 million people from Bandon. So it's, it's always attracted people like that going right back to the 50s and, and today. Lovely stuff. Uh, Joe, pleasure to chat with you this morning. Thank you very much. Joe Shea for Cork Mayor, anyone? We're back after the break.